I was looking at 2018 really carefully. It was absolutely fascinating. And, um, and it was a year where we didn't have any heat spikes. In July, August, September, the highest temperature that we had over those three months, 97 degrees. It's nothing. Wow. Nothing. Um, July was 95. August was 97. September was 96. That's nothing. Wow. So, we can have it. It was only three years ago. So it, it yeah. gave us uh, some uh, something to look forward to possibly for this year. If that's what we have this year, I think we could be on to something really nice. But it's it's way too early to tell. But yeah, um, totally. I'm certainly not op optimistic. Um, I think tell me what else. Tell me what else you liked about um, 18. But that's September. You know, no one gave me the average <clears throat> temperatures. That really says a lot. Yeah. So, and those aren't average temperatures. In fact, what I just gave you was oh, the highest. highest temperature per month in those three months, which is incredible. Wow. Yeah. That was the highest temperature. Um, I'm going to give you other more specific data. Yeah. Um, um, but let's start with the precipitation. First of all, and I'm, I'm telling you stuff you already know, but I think it's important yeah. to always keep in mind that California is a dry summer climate. And That's because true. of that, the soils essentially go dormant. What I mean is that the microbiological activity from June through October, essentially, there's not a lot of microbiological activity. That's totally different from what's happening in, in Bordeaux or, or uh, any other climate where you, you have summer rain. And so the way the rain falls and when it falls is really important to the microbiological activity, was, which is linked to mineralization and the release of minerals for the vines for their growth period. So mm -hmm. check this out. Uh, of course, you know, rain starts in October. On average for us, it's about 0.1 inches. So it's peanuts. Then in November, 1.6 inches. And then it really ramps up. We really have our, our rainfall over four months. In December, it's 6.6 .6 inches. And that's one of the top months of the year. Um, then January goes down to 4.8. Then we are back up at 6.6 .6 in February. Then it comes down, back down to 4.8. And then April's two. Then May is one. That's a typical year. So you've got yeah. you ramp up to December, then a little drop, then March, then a little drop. Um, uh, sorry, in February, then a little drop in March, and then it just peters off. Okay. In 2018 in November, so November 2017, we had 4.6 inches, which is three inches more than what you'd have in a typical year, which we like because it starts activating that, miner uh, that um, mineralization and that microbiological microbi activity early because you need moisture, air, and some heat for micro, my, uh, microorganisms to flourish. And so if you get it early, so November is still warm and we're coming off a really warm uh, autumn in 2017. So we've got some yeah. water in the soils. So that's really great. And then what happens is we plunge, we had almost zero inches in December. So in one of the rainiest yeah. months normally where we have 6.6, .6, we had none. So it's really oh. interesting. So the soil started warming up. It was also a super warm month. We had now, this is different. This is not the peak temperatures. This is the average high temperature in the month. We had six, uh, 63 nearly versus 58. And that 58 as an average, historical average, mm. that's five degrees warmer. That's huge. It was a super wow. warm month of December. And then January, we had 5.3 inches, which is just over 4.8 inches, which is the average. So we had about an average January. Then in February, almost nothing again, less than one inch in the one of the rainiest months where we normally have 6.6. .6. So we're having this pattern of like wow. rain and then the soils have time to dry out. They're not totally drying out, of course, but they're, they're staying moist without being mm -hmm. saturated because if you're saturated your soils, you don't have no microbiological activity either because they're asphyxiated. They're totally like drowned out. Yeah. So these soils that are kind of moist throughout the winter, it's really good. And then punctuated by this heat, because February too, no rain, but it was super warm. 
that same thing, it was more than four degrees difference between the average to so 65 and a half degrees versus 61 degrees on average. And that's the average high. So if you take every, every day, the high temperature, that's the average over the month. So it's super warm. And then, so let's just summarize really yeah. nice, mild, um, amounts winter. of, of water and winter with these warm temperatures. So it's kind of good for microbiological activity. Yeah. Um, we had a total precipitation over the, the, the growing year of 22 inches versus 31 and a half. So it's about 70% of a normal year. Yeah. Um, but then we had a really wet March. So we had almost eight inches. We had 7.9 inches ah. versus 4.8 typical. Normally we wouldn't like that because it's when the soils are already kind of saturated and then you get a lot of rain on top of that and you just have an overabundance of water. But because February was nearly no water and it was really warm, the soils weren't that saturated. So that extra water soaked in but oh, cool. it didn't. Um, it didn't create a situation where we had a super uh, wet spring. Even though that was a wet month, uh, it was early in the spring, and then April was a little bit more than average. It was two point eight inches versus two, and then May virtually nothing. So the soils kind of dried out nicely, and it set up the vintage really well. Now, kind of late, everything was. Um, it was kind of a late season. We started uh, bud. Yeah, but what? Yeah, I was going to ask, it, it seems to me it should be an early bud break because you had water and it was mild. Like in totally, Europe, that's what totally would happen. impossible to understand. Everything started late. Bud break was on April huh. sec 2nd versus March 28th average. So it was, okay. it was about four days late, not super late, but a little bit late. Bloom was the same thing, May 23rd instead of May 18th. So the whole year wow. is just kind of a late year. Um, for in terms of temperatures in April and May, we're on mild temperatures, meaning it yeah. was about average. Then it starts warming up in June and July. So um, June was about three degrees on average higher than a typical. Uh, July was two and a half degrees higher than a typical. Um, so it's really nice and warm in those months. So just to recall some years like that, 2006, 2016, there were many other vintages with a warm start of the summer. Uh -huh. But then what's really characteristic in 2018 is that August plunged in terms of temperature. We had really foggy, cool days. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. yeah which was super... Particularly in, particularly in Sonoma. Yeah, but I mean, that no, that's yeah. really typical. So in 2006 and 2016, that's what happened. It was ramping up uh, kind of nice warm vintage and all of a sudden the temperature dropped. So this is really a cool ripening vintage where August and September both, not only do we not have peaks. So, we, you know, those 97 and 96 were the high temperatures. That was the highest temperature that we had in the whole month. Um, we were on average highs. 83.6 versus 85 in August and 83.6 same versus 84.7 average. That's and that's really, pretty significant. We're really yeah. cool, you know? Um, and I have to say it was a huge relief after 2017. Yeah. It was really nice to see that. Um, that said, as things get later and later, you start getting a little nervous because of the fires that we saw. So we're like, okay, yeah. when is this thing going to, 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 when are we going to ripen? And we started harvest on October 1st. And we started with a Cabernet Franc, both at Ulysses and, and here at, at Napanook. And um, after that October 1st, on October 2nd, in the overnight, it started raining. And it started raining a lot. And it rained on October 2nd and on October 3rd, um, an inch total, about a half an inch each day. And I have to say, I was a bit deflated because it was looking so good. And the Cabernet Franc was amazing. And um, so I get on the phone with Christian and, uh, and I said, Christian, we, we, you know, we, we got an inch of rain. It's cool now. The, the temperatures were in the low 70s that week. Whoa, I didn't yeah, know yeah, any yeah. of this. And we, and we wanted to like, the things were, we were like 
chomping at the bit to start harvesting and we get this rain and this cold weather. And um, so right away, we, you know, we're tasting a shift in the fruit. We're like, gosh, this isn't ready. This is, this is, this is a problem. And Christian said, wait one week after a rain, wait one week. Yeah, of course. And it will be fine. So he was very calm. I was stressed out. And what happened, you know, you have you been in Napa at the beginning? Yeah, of course you have at the beginning of October, in the October yeah, of course. first of the week. Yeah. So you know these weird, like Indian summer, really dry uh winds. Yeah, and sure. It starts, and it starts warming up. It's kind of like fire. Yeah, like that, that was when the fire too. That was October right. nine. Remember? Exactly. That night totally. it was really yeah. hot air. I was there, okay. I was getting out of press. Totally. So I that remember. was exactly what happened. So we had, we started harvesting on uh, Monday. We had the rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. It was cold. And then on Friday, we started getting those weird, like warm winds. And throughout the weekend, it, everything dried off and everything like came back to normal. <laughs> and the That's vines nuts. were like, Jink. Um, and then we started tasting. And then we started harvesting again on the 8th. And we harvested like 94% of our harvest happen between the 8th and the 15th, which is really tight because normally we harvest over three weeks. So it was super intense, um, intense harvest. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It was so, so beautiful. It was um, the first time in a while that we tasted this kind of beautiful, harmonious complexity of fruit that ripens slowly with cool temperatures. 